Good morning. Um, my name is Roger Bingham. Welcome to the 8th Annual Scientific Symposium of the Stem Cell Meeting on the Mesa. <clears throat> this is also the third annual Med Partnering Forum. Um, one of the things I wanted to tell you to begin with is um, that this, as always, will be filmed by the Science Network. And I'll be popping off during the day as well to take some of the speakers here uh, and have conversations with them. And those conversations will also be on the Science Network. I should tell you, if you haven't been there and you want to know what I say <clears throat> after this with Anne and with the other speakers, if you go to www.thesciencenetwork.org, you will find about 1,000 videos and 120 of them are on stem cells. So there's a real archive and a trove there of things to find out. So I'll tell you more about that later. Um, just before introducing Anne, I just wanted to, to, to mention something, which is that the um, uh, Siddhartha Mukherjee was here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, how many of you know the book, The Emperor of All Maladies? Some of you do. Uh, a biography of cancer. Sid, I had a conversation with Sid afterwards, and he told me that he had an essay coming out in the volume called The Best American Science and Nature Writing of this year. And his essay is called On Tenderness. And he tells about being uh, in uh, going to Brno in the Czech Republic, a very quick train ride to go and, go and look at the birthplace of Gregor Mendel. And he arrived there, and it was rather stark. It was a monastery, of course, as you probably know the story. And he had to get through a lot of officialdom, and the, the lady who let him in said that he had to have something signed in duplicate, triplicate. Um, she was Russian. Um, and he said, well, look, you know, I, mean, I don't have it. Who, who do I have to send it to? And she said, well, me. So he, he said, well, can I, can I just go inside and look around the monastery and so on for the Mendel stuff? And he went in. She allowed him to go in, rushed him through and took him out. And he was reflecting later about how sad it was that he got to this wonderful birthplace of genetics and had been rushed through it. Then he, then he reflected a little bit more and thought that Mendel, of course, must have worked in this rather restrictive atmosphere. But nevertheless, uh, in what he was doing, um, <clears throat> there was what, what, what Mukherjee called, what Sid called tenderness. And he pointed out that Mendel was first and foremost a gardener. And his science began with tending. And he was working with tendrils and so on. And, and he went on to say, when I witness science in action, I see this tenderness on ab in abundance. On Monday mornings, the graduate students and postdoctoral researchers in my laboratory rush into work to look at how their cells have grown over the weekend. The best of these researchers have a gardener's instinct. Some other cultures need nourishment. They know others, like ferns, need to be left alone to inhabit the corners of incubators. Yet others must be coaxed with growth factors to flourish. So he said, look closely among scientists and you'll find this quality everywhere. And then he goes on to list all the tenderness in chemists and other scientists. And he says that in an age of increasingly mechanized production, the genesis of scientific knowledge remains an unyieldingly, obstreperously hand-hewn process. It's among the most human of our activities and far from being subsumed by the dehumanizing effects of technology, science remains our last stand against it. I don't know whether you'll find yourselves in there rushing into labs and looking at your cultures and so on, but I thought it was an interesting take on science and <clears throat> the communication of it. Um, one of the things that you'll find about um, our opening speaker, Anne Sukamoto, is that if you actually Google her, the most interesting thing, the most prevalent thing you'll find about her is the number of lists she's in as an inventor. And these lists are often in, in science, on sites about women in science. Um, and, and again, the communication of, 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 her, of her efforts is, is out there. I won't read the whole thing uh, about Anne because uh, if you wouldn't mind, we'll try and move things along a little bit. And you have the programs, so you have the biographies. She's actually um, at, the, at Stem Cells Inc., the EVP for Scientific and Strategic Alliances, and the, the, the um, patent I was talking about was um, an extraordinary uh, co-discovery of the human hematopoietic stem cell while at Systemics Inc. But, but 
rather than spend all the time reading this, let me just introduce Anne to give the keynote opening address, Anne Sukamoto.